Meghan and Harry, stop blaming everyone. Why is it never their fault? Looks like they need to look a little closer to home. Hello and welcome to the Royal Family News Channel. Plus, there were people before that who speculated that William and Kate basically kicked them out of Han's palace after their relationship soured, and then it was the horrible racist royal who kicked them out of the family and eventually out of the UK. And now they would try to claim that they were repeatedly unlucky in the timing of their business endeavors, and that in Spotify's case, they were set up to fail from the start. Harry and Meghan, these lucky victims. It always has to be someone else. Spotify cut ties with them and their £18 million deal after just one run of Meghan's artists. This is because the late Queen passed away in the middle of the 12-episode run, and so out of respect they had to take a little break from the show until a period of mourning was over which has affected the advertisement in a way that was embarrassing to them. There was a lot of negativity surrounding their interview with Oprah Winfrey. They did so in March 2021 where they claimed to be a member of the royal family and later clarified that it was not the late queen, or Prince Philip, who was getting even more haircuts. The races wondered what the skin color of their unborn child might be, which sparked a whole storm of racism. Oh, we misunderstood this situation, all thanks to the fact that he was overshadowed by the poor health of the Duke of Edinburgh who died soon after. Of course, it had absolutely nothing to do with inflicting so much pain on the aging queen when her 73-year-old husband was so ill in hospital and their attempts to rebrand themselves as global philanthropists, bringing their luster and celebrity shine to help charities elevate the MO, well, that was complicated by Coven 19, which followed just weeks after they left as working-class royalty on March 20. And of course, that meant everyone had to stay home and work on their natural sourdough. And thanks to budget streaming giants like Netflix, they still have that big deal worth around £78 million and Spotify can't really waste the money it once could. Netflix also reportedly has no plans to renew Meghan and Harry's contract when it expires in 2020.25. Oh yeah, poor Meghan and Harry. They try so hard to launch their careers after running away from the royal family, but every time they are somehow thwarted, a source in Los Angeles spoke to the newspaper saying they think they really don't. Got lucky now. The final reason they found for their bad luck was that they were simply not ready for Spotify's success. A source close to Meghan and Harry's artistic output spoke to People magazine officially saying that the earth had kicked things off, so they were already on shaky ground even before the ink not be dry, even though Arch Audio only produced 12 episodes of Archetypes for Spotify, the source noted the quote. They have a lot of ideas and presented them, but the source says there was too much bureaucracy between Spotify and Make and Harry and things got moving. Too slowly on both sides, despite Spotify allegedly funding a recording studio at their Montecito mansion, and they hired a few experienced producers to work with them, and in some cases even interview guests as claimed. Again, it's always someone else's fault. I mean, where is Harry at and hinting that maybe they need to look closer to home? This is nothing new, although we have all seen it before. Harry's backup book seems like a long wind-up. It was always someone else's fault, usually of course, William's or his dad's, and sometimes the Harry and Meth series felt like an orgy of victimhood, and also about trouble. They thought there was more to Meghan's race. Harry said the royal family is riddled with unconscious bias, and said it is sometimes part of the problem rather than the solution to racism. They also blame this inherent racism of people in the UK, UK, and also in the media. Luckily, even though the Queen of the Lake never had to put up with watching her beloved Commonwealth renamed Empire 2.0, I mean Meghan, and Harry blamed everything from Brad's to colonial history for their mistreatment perceived, her Meghan said. Of course, now people are very aware of my race, because they met on such an issue when I went to the UK, but before that most people didn't treat me like a black woman. Okay, if I remember correctly, and I'm pretty sure yes. Meghan's heritage, her Meta's heritage was celebrated. People were happy. It was a real step forward 
the 21st century equality that would represent parts of the UK that Charles, Camilla, or even William can never really hope to reach from bricks. However, Meghan was celebrated, but I guess the Queen of the Lake said so. Best memories really vary, not to say it'll be pretty interesting to see what happens the next time Meghan and Harry have to rebrand themselves in the public eye. Next month they are flying from their California mansion to the In Games, and it's a mighty Olympic-style event for military men and women. And of course it was started by Harry, and he says it's a project that's really close to his heart. The event is set to start on September 9th, just a day after late Queen's death anniversary, and it would be the perfect time for Meghan and Harry to make sure the spotlight is on other people. But I don't think we should expect that to happen at this point. If I come across someone who says they're a big fan of Meghan, I guess they're delusional. Maybe even a sugar. Someone who believes every word that comes out of his mouth, well, folks, if you're big Meghan fans, you're welcome. You can believe what you want about how you feel, it makes no difference to those of us who have a different opinion. And the truth is, there are a lot more of you, but what if a sugar meets a royal? Apart from Meghan and Harry of course, I think they would find them to be quite low-key and have no sense of fame or importance, they are kind and caring people and dedicate their lives to helping others. They go there and meet your ordinary people there, they shake hands with people and also talk to the sick and injured. The homeless are less fortunate than them and they really care. They are not celebrities. They don't mind being celebrities. That's not what their life is about, but you know what dot someone desperate for fame. Well, that would be Megan herself, just look at her behavior, her attitude towards people she considers inferior to her. At least. Harry is happy when he talks to disabled kids and injured veterans, but I've never seen Meghan show an iota of sympathy for anyone. It's such an evil family, dot, he has treated the royal family like trash, and is quickly losing any friends he might have had. And I heard that Bob Iger, the head of Disney, also withdrew Disney support for indie games because of Meghan's behavior. I mean, how low has she gone so far? So folks, if you want to keep loving Meghan, go for it. But please leave us alone and stop asking these silly questions. The fact that Meghan is biracial has nothing to do with people not liking her. In fact, people don't like him because of all the lies he tells. I mean 17, just on that Oprah Winfrey show that was shown in passing. The latest article claims that Disney decided to withdraw its support for the Invictus Games due to Meghan's evil behavior, and that Spotify had to fire her. I mean, remember they called them both exactly crooks. They were globally recognized as crooks and crooks and nobody wants anything to do with Meghan. I mean. So keep in mind that absolutely nothing was because of his behavior. So the sugars must stop talking about the royal family, because obviously the country of Meghan does not support its destructive character. And let's not forget the general public. Thanks to Meghan, I can now clearly see why Harry wanted so badly to leave the royal family and now much of his horrific behavior has been covered up by his family and the monarchy. But now he's lonely and doesn't like it when things get tough. As we learned, Harry really seems to be allergic to rules. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter who you are or what status you have in life. There are certain rules that we all have to follow. These are the rules that promote world peace, well, Harry doesn't care about those rules and doesn't feel obligated to follow them. So he wanted to leave the monarchy, because their rules were too difficult for him to follow. He's such a selfish person who believes rules are for everyone, not him. Can you imagine what kind of world we would live in if each of my gods? So before anyone criticizes the royal family, they should consider the behavior of their idols. The royal family do incredible work for charities, and for the UK, and Commonwealth countries. No one even knew Meghan was black. I mean, actually, she's not black, she's biracial, and she only started talking about it when she thought it would help her get by. When Harry served in the army, he had to be reprimanded not once, 
but twice for referring to his army buddies using racial slurs, but Megan's is still with him. So I don't think she's too bothered by the racism, or she would have broken up with him as soon as she found out, and you. What do you think of Harry and Meghan? Please tell me your opinion below in the comments. If you think my video is helpful, don't be afraid to charity to your friends and family in need whenever you want and don't be afraid to subscribe to our Royal Family News channel for more updates in the future. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great week, and we'll be back to see you in the next videos.